This video has mention of multiple sensitive topics. It is not recommended for young audiences. Your discretion is advised. Hey there everyone, my name is Angelina and welcome to your daily dose of drama video. Before we spill the situation, I have a quick update on the Lumi Starbun drama. As of March 24th, Lumi has posted claiming she's leaving Twitter. Yes! With this information, I'll only continue to bring up Lumi if she decides to come back. All we can do is hope that doesn't happen, and that all of this drama can finally be put to rest. With that said, today we will be discussing the topic of Yandere Simulator's poor development and unsettling developer. As always, please comment on topics you guys want down below. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on the situation. The artwork for all my commentary videos is provided by at Elixir via Twitter. Thank you, Eerie, for providing me with actual emotions. Please do not go after or harass Yandere Dev or any other names used in this video. Now, onto the drama. In 2014, the game Yandere Simulator was put into development by Yandere Dev, aka Alex Mahan. Alex had created a bug test of Yandere Sim by himself originally, and since then has been working on the development of the game with the help of generous Patreon supporters. Yandere Simulator is a game that takes place at a Japanese school, where the player infiltrates the role of a high school girl who meets an upperclassman and falls in love with the idea of him. However, the beloved senpai in which you desire is friends with your future rival, Osana Najimi. Throughout the demo of Yandere Simulator, your task as Ayano Aishi is to eliminate your rival and get away with whatever means necessary. You must get rid of Osana without getting caught. However, it's 2020 and the first rival Osana still isn't in the game. Six years of development and an official demo has not been released. I'm sure y'all are wondering, Angelina, games take a long time to make. Like, what about TF2 and Diablo 3? Oh, okay, look. The problem with all of this is that the game could have been released years ago. Yandere Dev is only now close that he has the assets and claims he has added most of the things needed to release Osana officially. But the thing is, we don't need fancy shaders and Neko phone accessories to eliminate Osana. We don't need a new custom menu or a HUD setup. The players like the game how it is. Alex doesn't have to implement anything else except for Osana, but he sees the demo is incomplete without it. The whole point of a game demo is to test the main function do we need 90 plus students to test game functions? Do we need all school clubs? No! We don't need any of these fine sanded products. All the players want at this point is Osana. People have been paying for this game for six years. They've paid for updates, they've paid for progress, and they've paid for Osana's development. Alex hasn't given them anything back in return. He's given us, okay, um, an outdoor pool, um, a gossip girl club, and god, don't get me started on the freaking easter eggs, I swear. Alex, if you just released Osana, you wouldn't need to keep your channel and game relevant with easter eggs. I get that people want you to update and work on your game, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure coding is a lengthy process for Alex to do on his own, but if he could take an ounce of criticism and use that as motivation, he could have a team. <laughs> but no! Alex isn't the most experienced programmer, so his code is messy and unorganized. There's nothing wrong with being a beginner, but Alex doing all of this by himself and refusing to work with coders of a higher skill set is just selfish. Like, I can't. He'd rather do it all himself, unorganized, and take longer than actually get the shit in for the demo and assemble a team. He had the chance to do this, but when the coder from Tiny Build, like, you know, the company that made Hello Neighbor? No, just me. Was working with him, he fired the worker because Alex himself couldn't understand the organized coding. Now let's go back a bit. Um, how about to Alex's Eva Stefan era? That's how you say it? Back when you PBS and Yandere Dev blogged about some audio disturbing topics, ooh. Note at this time, the game was not in development and Alex was about 20 years old. He's blogged about some disturbing topics, such as claiming girls reject him solely because of his appearance, claims he cannot find a girlfriend even though he desires one, and claim that he fantasizes about killing his parents. Now, viewer discretion is advised, but Alex Mahan in the past has also written smut fan fiction. Yeah, I know, right? I can't go into too much due to YouTube's guidelines, but this basically means he's written and not safe for YouTube fiction. I had to go looking through some old forms, which I'll um, link in the description if you guys really want to go look at that, if you don't believe me. But this literally had me speechless. This text was taken from his fan fiction written in the point of view of a slave. 
So I'm sure you're wondering how this links up to recent events, in which the only thing I can really suggest is that Yandere Dev is still perverted. I will go to my wits end saying this because he originally planned to implement the use of the Yakuza and illegal trafficking of teenage girls and boys. <laughs> Allow me to read the definition of Yakuza for you. Yakuza, also known as Gokudo, are members of a transnational organized crime syndicates originated in Japan. For simple terms, they're a mafia organization in Japan. The Yakuza's job is to eliminate rivals for the player when provided with corpses. Male students would be harvested for their organs, and female students would be sold as slaves. Now, if we look at Yandere Simulator, the majority of female students are under 18. Though the game is set in Japan and technically falls under legal age, which isn't good, but okay, boomer. <laughs> so, if Yandere Dev plans to implement sex trafficking into a game with teenage girls, yeah, you kind of see my point, it's kind of gross, you know what I mean? Not to mention that 15.8% of the people that view videos on this game are under 18. While this isn't a video exclaiming that the majority of this content is not viewed by children, the 13 to 17 year old category is the third highest for watch hours. Meaning that just because they view devs videos less, doesn't mean they don't watch for majority of the video. And I'll say this as a disclaimer, lots of people lie about their age when making YouTube accounts. In order to make a YouTube account, you have to be 13 or older to create one, so chances are the real percentage of underage viewers may be a lot higher. I'll also mention Yandere Dev has a thing for, um, anime melons. Yeah, that's what we can call it. As you can tell by the oversized feminine bus in his game, characters like Kokona Haruka, Saki Miyu, and Maya Waifu all contain large bus sizes. And I'm pretty sure Maya Waifu is what Alex calls his waifu, so... Okay, and another thing that's downright disgusting about this game is that the seventh rival, Medirana, her role as a rival is to be an attractive attractive substitute teacher. The Yandere Simulator website claims that her hobby is seducing teenage boys. Seducing underage teenage boys. Like guys, I don't know, this lady's a pedophile, but not in Japan. Still messed, still messed, but I'ma let it slide. <laughs> and I won't get much into it, but there is also a part-time nurse who shows off a little too much free healthcare, if you know what I mean. <laughs> God, this video. Yeah. Anyway, Yandere Simulator is a game full of over-sexualized teen girls and brutal murder, developed by a perverted 31-year-old man-child. And, um, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Thank you all for tuning into the drama. Feel free to subscribe and leave a like to show some support for the channel. Let me know what you guys think about all of this and, uh, who and what I should commentate on next. Be sure to consume the cum chalice and I'll uh, see you guys all in the next one. Thank you.